Hello everyone, it's Grumpy Gamer. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering the Matter Fabricator. It was a requested uh, video, so I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. But now I know some of you are coming from Tekkit. The only thing I'm going to say for Tekkit players, if you're watching this video and you're not familiar with it, basically the Matter Fabricator replaces the Mass Fabricator. But I'm going to assume in this video that you're totally new to Tekkit or Feed the Beast, so or Industrial Craft or whatever, so I'm just going to go over everything you need to, to build this. Now first of all, i got to say this is the high end of uh, uh, item it's made in the end game it's not something you're gonna, you're gonna build after a couple days um, it's very very expensive it takes a lot of resources a lot of high-end rare resources to build it but anyway let's let's start I'm like I say I'm gonna assume that you don't uh, know anything about it so bear with me if you do know a little bit about it okay first of all the uh, matter fabricator what is it used for it's used to make this stuff called UU matter there's certain recipes that call for UU matter um, here's an example. Let me show you one. Uh, this thing right here. Sunarium. The only way you get this stuff is with six pieces of UU matter and three pieces of glowstone. So there's the recipe for it. So you have to have UU matter and I believe that's used to make high-end uh, solar panels. So if you want to make high-end solar panels you're gonna have to have one of these but there's a lot of other recipes. I won't go over all of them. You make sapphires, ender pearls, blaze rods, all kinds of things. So now how does this thing work? Well it needs two things to operate. First of all it needs scrap. Uh, we'll go over how to get that in a minute. But it also needs electricity and it needs massive amounts of electricity. Right now this thing is receiving uh, power straight off. Uh, basically it's uh, MFSU so this thing's is drawing 512 EU per tick out of the system. Now if you don't understand what that means I'm sorry I can't cover all this tutorial. Like I said this is the high end component. A basic EU is the uh, electricity from like solar panels and thermal generators and stuff like that, geothermal geothermal generators. Uh, but basically, if you, like a generator produces 10 uh, EU per tick, this machine's using 512 EU per tick. So it would take uh, 51 generators to get as much electricity as I'm powering in this thing right now. I like I say, it's, a, it's an end game. It gives you something to do. Once you got massive amounts of electricity, it gives you something to do with your electricity. So the other thing it needs is, like I say, here's the electricity bar. Whenever this thing gets to about right here, uh, this percentage will go up 3%. So we'll see here in a second. But let's wait just one second. Well, I'll just keep watching. I think it must be nighttime because it's running a little slow. But anyway, it also needs scrap. Now, this electricity bar can fill up all the way. This machine, this percentage right here will not go up. When, by the way, when this percentage reaches 100%, it will make a piece of UU matter. But to go for, to actually increase, it needs power and it also needs scrap. So how are we getting scrap? With this machine right here, it's called a recycler. And basically, uh, you put stuff in there, uh, it gives you a small chance of getting a piece of scrap. So. Here's the input to the system. The best way to do a mass fabric or matter fabricator is to have a little um, production line right here to do it. But I put stuff in here I don't want. Right now I don't want obsidian. The quarry is getting tons of obsidian right now, and I got more than enough. I got, I don't know what to do with it, so I scrap it. And basically, it takes these blocks, puts them in this recycler, and you get like a one out of eight. Or with Greg's tech, it might be one out of twenty chance of getting a piece of scrap. I'm not sure. It doesn't look too bad, but. It used to be one out of eight in Tekkit, but anyway, a block goes in here and you get a, a small chance of getting a piece of scrap. The scrap goes inside the matter fabricator. So let's go over this machine a little bit, how it works. I won't get too detailed with it. Um, but anyway, I have an input chest and I have two redstone engines connected to wooden pipe sucking stuff out. The gold pipe speeds the blocks up. You can see right here they're moving slow, but as soon as they hit this gold pipe, they speed up. And they're going through a stone transport pipe into a hopper and finally into the recycler and here you can see the output of the recycler have one engine there a gold pipe same setup going into the top of the matter fabricator and by the way if you want to put something inside the matter fabricator or the recycler you have to do it from the top uh, you get the output from the sides so anyway you can see right here the like I said the uh, scrap goes into here and as soon as this thing gets done making a piece of U matter, you can see it's uh, not too far away from being done. Uh, same setup here, a uh, redstone engine with a wooden pipe, a gold transport pipe, sucking it out into this chest. So this is the output chest. 
so that's basically how the matter fabricator works so um, I, I love this thing uh, for one thing it just gives you something something to do with all this electricity you generate you get to a point where all your machines are there as fast as they need to be you can't you just need something to do with your electricity well these things will take all the electricity you want to feed into them I don't know about the matter fabricator but the mass fabricator from Tekkit could handle half a million EU per tick so basically you could have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of solar panels feeding it so um, how am I feeding it well let me show you first of all I have to have an on off switch for this thing because if it starts raining or something I, I use strictly solar power um, this thing right here is going to drain my entire power grid I don't want that to happen so here's what I do um, if you've seen some other videos right now my power grid has four MFSU's uh, at the top of this I'm in the side of a mountain but at the top of the mountain there's four MFSU's and I don't want all four of those MFSU's to feed this thing because they would suck it dry in just a matter of minutes so here's how I control it I have oops, I have a high voltage transformer right here now these things can only output 512 EU per tick now if I since I have four MFSU's at the top they can put out 2048 EU per tick so this thing right here is just limiting uh, the current. I can only have a quarter of my power going through here because it's limited by this transformer. Now later on when I get uh, more solar panels, I may put a second high voltage transformer in line and that's going to double the current that it can go through. But anyway, this is how I limit the power and this is also how I shut off the power. Now if it starts raining or something, I just don't have the electricity and the storage so it will eventually drain the system dry. But here's how I turn it off and on. I just flip that switch right there. Uh, probably something not everybody's aware of, but if you put a redstone signal on a transformer, it reverses the current. And so basically, right here, it's just acting as an on off switch. So I can turn the transformer off and on right there. But anyway, let's get into how to make this thing. It's very complicated, so I'm not going to go over all of it. I'm just going to go over the more uh, difficult parts so here it is right here matter fabricator uh, it's very complicated a lot of the stuff you can figure out on your own it's not too hard like say for example a teleporter there's a glass fiber cable advanced circuits you can click any of that and see how to make it but some of the stuff in this recipe um, you're gonna have to have specialized machines to make An example is gonna be chrome ingots and titanium ingots let me show you how you get those you're gonna do this with something called and industrial centrifuge now, by the way if you're thinking about building one of these I'm going to tell you you're going to need eight pieces of iridium ore and it's extremely rare um, it took us a whole week of a quarry running full speed to get eight pieces so just to let you know but anyway let's show you how to make this uh, this block right here because it's one of the more difficult blocks um, so to get chrome you need chrome ingots to get that, uh, let's go backwards. Figure out what we need. Need chrome dust. There we go. You got to put ruby dust inside of industrial centrifuge, and that will give you chrome dust. You cook it, and you get chrome ingots. So chrome ingots are one of the things you needed. So to get that, you take this. To get this ruby dust, you just uh, macerate rubies. You're going to find rubies everywhere. That's one of the uses for it. Is you macerate it you macerate it and you get ruby dust and you put ruby dust inside of industrial centrifuge now if you're not familiar with an industrial centrifuge um, I'll go over it a little bit here I won't go over how to craft it it's more of a mid-tier machine but basically you would put your ruby dust here where this bauxite dust is at right now and you see these four bars are here these are progress bars when these fill up it's gonna spit out byproducts into these output slots but if you put ruby dust in here one of the byproducts will be chrome dust now a lot of these industrial centrifuge recipes require empty cells so that's what this slot right here is for I just keep some in there right now all these things are, are making bauxite let me see what bauxite the byproducts of that are so we get aluminum titanium hydrogen cell and compressed air cells now let me go over all these because these are pretty nice all of these are nice I know it's getting sidetracked a little bit but not too bad First of all, the, I was telling you you need chrome dust. The other thing you needed was titanium dust. So this is the recipe that will give you the titanium dust, by the way. Just put 
you're going to find bauxite ore macerated you get dust and you stick the dust inside the industrial centrifuge and it's going to take it 10 or 15 minutes or it's going to take it 2500 seconds whatever that comes out to be but it's going to create these four byproducts now that all these things are all four of these uh, byproducts are very useful first of all there's a scuba helmet use compressed air cells uh, if you build a scuba helmet you keep compressed air cells on you and when you're underwater it'll consume compressed air cells to let you breathe Aluminum dust is very useful for making a refined, uh, what's it called, mixed metal ingots to make uh, advanced alloy, which is uh, actually something you need to make this, so this uh, matter fabricator. Aluminum dust can also be used in place of iron, refined iron in a lot of recipes. Um, these hydrogen cells, these can be used as a fuel source, so if you got like a generator, instead of putting a piece of wood or coal in there, you can put a hydrogen cell. and they last a very very long time especially in something like a generator but anyway that's how you get the titanium dust and the chrome dust and remember that was to make the highly advanced machine blocks so let's go back here you need an advanced machine block chrome dust and titanium ingots well that's how you get those the advanced machine block that's uh, basic self-explanatory stuff uh, well you will need this other machine here you'll need a rolling machine Hopefully, if you've been making solar panels, you're already going to have a rolling machine industrial centrifuge, so I guess I don't need to cover that too much. But um, if you don't know how to use a roller and machine or the industrial centrifuge, I would check out my video. I got a video, it's called, uh, uh, the exact name I, escapes me, something, so, I just, it's my first Feed the Beast tutorial, but it tells you how to make solar panels with the Greg Tech recipes. Now, if, uh, you're not familiar with Greg's tech, basically it's one of the mods inside the Feed the Beast, but it makes the recipes harder than the default, which I enjoy that. It makes the game last a lot longer. It makes it a lot more fun and challenging. You need more resources to do stuff and more automation, that kind of thing. But anyway, let me go over the other part that's difficult. Um, you, like I say, you'll need eight pieces of radium ore, so don't even mess with this. What you do is when you find a radium ore, just put it in a chest and eventually you'll get eight pieces and once you get eight pieces you can make this but let's go over this energy flow circuit now these are advanced circuits in the corner and lapton crystals those aren't hard to make just take a lot of resources but here's the iridium plate if we click that you'll need four advanced alloys uh, a diamond and four iridium ingots this is the super expensive rare part but basically uh, when you go cave in a quarry in a cave you'll run into iridium ore and this is what it looks like but now here's a very very good tip let me show you something um, this is what iridium ore looks like when it's not in this form out in the real world it looks kind of like silver so it's kind of hard to tell the difference between that lead I have a hard time telling the difference between all those uh, blocks but here's how you know if it's iridium it's really hard to bust it'll be like trying to bust a piece of obsidian so what I would recommend doing is making either a rock cutter let me show you what that looks like or um, make a pick that has silk touch see I have one here and use when I go cave and I carry this with me I never use it the only thing I'll use it for is diamonds or iridium more but you can also make this thing here called a rock cutter it has silk touch 3 on it what silk touch does is like say for example it gives you the actual block instead of the ore so like um, let me go back and show that to you okay here here is the here's the ore they both called iridium ore, but this is what you get if you just if you this is what you'll see out in the real world if you bust that block. This is what you get. But if you look right here in the rock crusher, this is why I tell you to make silk touch. This stuff's extremely rare. You're lucky to find like one piece, one or two pieces a day. That's if you got a massive quarry going at max speed and you're caving and everything. But um, if you run out in this the real world, pull out your silk touch pick or your rock cutter and use that to break the block because if you if you uh, crush this or macerate it you'll get two ready more if you just uh, use a pick or a, or like say a diamond drill to bust the uh, iridium ore you're only going to end up with one iridium so as rare as that stuff is uh, you want to definitely use silk touch to harvest it so let's see if there's anything else to cover okay teleporters aren't too hard neither is lapatronic energy orb this is going to take iridium plate too but um, it's going to take a grand total of eight iridium. So, by the time you get eight iridium, you're probably going to have 
diamonds I don't know the exact count of diamonds you need for this probably half a stack to a stack uh, everything on this is high in materials but the iridium ore is the main one extremely rare but anyway let's go back down here make sure I didn't forget anything I don't think I did I almost always forget something in a, bit in a tutorial but once again this is the processor now here's what I recommend doing I haven't done it yet I would replace this chest with a Oh, let me show you what I, I what I actually setup we have. This is important too for when you get to the point where you're using a matter fabricator, you need to have some automation going just to really be effective. But here's my ore processor. I'm not going to cover that, but uh, I'm going to cover a little bit, not the whole thing. Okay, basically the way this thing works is here's an ender chest. This is connected. There's another one at the quarry, and they're both program they're both programmed to be red, red, red. And so what that means is anything that appears in the quarry chest automatically appears in this chest. So if I was to actually put a piece of wood at the quarry, it would show up here and the ore processor can pull it out of this chest. But here's what I need to do, and I just hadn't done it yet, but some stuff needs to go to the ore processor and some stuff doesn't. Some stuff's crap like cobblestone and dirt and gravel. At the moment I'm just throwing it away at the quarry, it's going falling into a, a block of lava and being destroyed. But what I need to do and this is what you want to do. Um, you want to put another pipe down here at the bottom, and put the stuff. The, you want to put the low EMC, or no, I'm sorry, you want to put the low value stuff like dirt and cobblestone and gravel in there. Make it come out of the bottom of this pipe. This is the sorting pipe. This this is diamond pipe. It determines what goes where. So as you can see, it has different colors: red, white. Uh, part of this is missing. We had a slot mishap. The game crashed and part of the blocks disappeared. The macerator just vanished. And so did this glass fiber cable up under here. But anyway, um, yeah, your, your ore processor, this is basically your basic sorting machine. This is what I use. Um, but I would have the low value stuff like dirt, gravel, and cobblestone go down into this floor and come down here and go straight into this chest and that will go into the recycler. Now you're thinking well I could just get rid of that chest. I still like to leave the chest there because what the chest does uh, uh, it gives you a trash bin. If you don't want something you throw it in the recycler and it gets recycled. But anyway that's the last thing I wanted to mention. Um, if you have an ore processor and you have low value blocks like cobblestone and dirt that's what you feed into the recycler and that's going to help you here. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of scrap at first because you can see right now I have it backing up on me a little bit. I have two stacks of scrap. Um, I just don't have enough electricity. Well, I actually have this thing turned off too. But anyway, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. This is how to do a matter fabricator. So in this video you learned how to make it. You learned how to use it. Uh, you learned some good tricks on how to get the most use out of it. Like how to build a... You learned how to build this machine. And uh, so I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I'm babbling a little bit, sorry. Um, so, if you enjoyed this video or if you found it informative, please give it a like. It helps my, really helps my channel out a lot. And also, too, if I get a video gets a lot of likes, I know to make more videos of that type. So, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like here. Perhaps an upvote on Reddit would be nice, too. But, anyways, Grumpy, we will see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.